Black humor, ultraviolence, explicit scenes, and superheroes that cause nothing but disgust. All this is about the boys. This famous series turned our pictures of superheroes upside down and ridicules genre cliches from the opening credits and costumes up to the origin of the characters and shooting style in every possible way. But behind the jokes about tempting fate and a bloody mess, there is also a huge number of important issues that absolutely every viewer cares about. This is the About Movies channel, and today we are figuring out why The Boys can be considered one of the best TV series of our time. And before that, we suggest you click on the subscription button and the bell, because on this channel you will get a summary of the most interesting information about your favorite movies and TV series. Subscribe and we start. That series was released at the very right time. Judge for yourself, the Marvel Cinematic Universe has peaked in the crossover movie Avengers Endgame. The CW series have converged in their largest crossover in Crisis on Infinite Earths, and Warner Brothers finally started making superhero movies. The genre has already managed to form a certain tradition, a set of plots, images, and techniques. And at some point, it became necessary to rethink and reform superheroics. And so, when many began to demand something new from the genre, they appeared. Some golden kind of swoop out of the sky, save the day, so you don't go and do it yourself. But if you knew half the shit they get up to, fucking die, Bond. The Boys is an adaptation of the comic book of the same name by Garth Ennis and Derek Robertson. It describes a world where there is a powerful corporation, Vought, which owns superheroes and wants control over almost the whole world. The superheroes are not noble saviors, but superstars corrupted by impunity, who are no longer interested in fighting crime, but going to the evening show, filming, and ratings. The tone of the boys is radically different from the usual superhero canons. There is no colorful Marvel Studio attraction that offers to escape from reality, or the dark pretentiousness of the DC films. In the first scene, the creators genuinely mix black humor with explicit scenes of violence and sex, and in the second one, they fill the narrative with almost Shakespearean collisions. If studio blockbusters often tell about the origin and formation of superheroes, then the showrunner of the project, Eric Kripke, finds his characters in moments of deep crisis. The superheroes in The Boys resemble rock stars. They drink and swear, lie, and are hypocritical. The members of the Seven, the local Justice League, can be compared to the pantheon of ancient Greek gods. Both are far from the ideals of virtue, both are overwhelmed by simple human passions, and both do not care about ordinary people fundamentally. Look at you! You really dress the part. It's your old uniform, but I'm saving it for the new one. Hey, Starline! Show us your tits! At times, the parody of superheroes even turns into deconstruction. For example, in scenes where superheroes, sitting at their pretentious negotiating table, discuss not incidents in the world, but the filming of their adventures, in which they themselves are going to act. At these moments, the irony over the genre reaches its maximum. By the way, don't forget to write in the comments which scenes of the series you like the most. We read everything and like the most interesting ones. The series has become a vivid challenge to all fans of the genre. Superhumans are evil, corporations have won, and superheroes and supervillains are, in fact, the same people, and ordinary citizens mean nothing to them. The audience was delighted that the boys offered a different approach to superheroics, but did they? Remember what the latest Marvel films talked about? Spider-Man Far From Home talked about the power of deception and the ease of influencing public consciousness. Captain Marvel was about immigration and how it was easy to deceive soldiers by sending them into battle. But if the cinematic universe is criticized for the monotonous introduction of their topics, then the boys are praised for the depth in which they do exactly the same things. They just presented them differently. For example, there is the main character of the series. This is an unremarkable Huey, whose girl is accidentally killed by a superhero. Wanting revenge, the guy joins the Avengers squad led by Billy Butcher, and together they begin a crusade against the Seven, led by the domineering Homelander. 
The series reflects on how ordinary people suffer from superhero fights. This topic has already been raised in movie comics and the same Captain America Civil War, but never before the victim has become the main character of such stories. Huey's storyline is not only a story about growing up, but also a story of human resistance to a system that is easily projected on the real world. This is a lot of money, Huey. We could really use it. I can't... Dad, they killed her. Be realistic. Only at first glance, The Boys is just a humorous, bloody story that parodies the cliches of superhero cinema. Behind the outright mockery of the genre, important topics are hidden. Even when the camera focuses on how someone's head explodes, the series tries to give really important comments on the most acute problems of the modern world. Finally, we are going to hold hearings on and Compound B. Yes! Yes! Hey, everyone. The main bad guy of the series is not even some sadistic supervillain but the Vought Corporation, which makes toys, movies, and TV shows, and constantly monitors ratings. Vought is a vivid caricature of modern film studios. Eric Kripke shows how managers and producers work, exposes the process of creating superhero films, and demonstrates how the industry is connected with politics. Kripke shows the danger lies not only in the fact that corporations begin to control virtually everything, from alcoholic beverages to show business, but also in the fact that a large capital joins with the army and becomes a dangerous military force. All this leads to a fairly obvious conclusion. The Boys is a series about a crisis of trust in media and corporations. I am willing to give you a three-year exclusive contract with full PR support and I'm going to give you nine and a half points of the merchandising. Superheroes, being the main product, the infernal creature of this system, do not really save anyone. If we see such episodes, then there are people with professional shooting equipment nearby. Basically, it's some kind of public nice story that can be shown on TV. That is, the main claim is that Vaught is constructing a fake television reality that isn't relevant to the present. Pay attention to how the picture changes when we switch to recordings from TV cameras. Bright colors and a positive attitude appear, which are not present in the rest of the series. Even the costumes are starting to look more decent. Don't you have some kind of feeling of fake irregularity of these armors? Obviously, that's what it is meant to be. The worst sin of the Vought Corporation is that it tries to create the illusion of sincerity. All the characters in front of the camera imitate real emotions, but when emotions really come out, the local Wonder Woman, on the contrary, shouts to get the cameras out. Because nothing, even a little bit of the real thing, should be transmitted into traditional media. In addition, we are shown many other problems relevant to modern society. For example, the theme of sexual violence, which becomes the starting point for the evolution of several heroes, is a reflection of the processes associated with the Me Too movement. You know, if I ever really thought that you'd fallen for someone else, I just, I don't think I could handle it. Is that so? You and me, we're different. Better. The criticism of traditional masculinity, which is closely related to the evolution of superheroes, plays an important role in the series. The inconsistency of the conventional male image is interpreted by two figures. There are Homelander and Butcher. Even if the second one seems to be a defender of justice, his methods differ little from the villainous ones. The problem of sexual minorities in the context of the entertainment industry does not remain without attention. Kripke wittily shows how large companies exploit the social agenda and make money on other people's problems. The Boys criticizes the hypocrisy of big studios and this is how they, for example, parody Marvel and DC's attempts to please a feminist audience. There is also the topic of drug addiction, the underside of the sports industry and the crisis of the church, which is radicalized and becoming an individual brand. The same Starlight gets a reprimand from the authorities because of the critical, unpleasant questions that she asks on the stage of a Christian event. What's immoral is the guy who shoved his dick in my face. 
Shit. Shit. No one has any answers on how to live properly. Nobody's perfect. There's the old biblical wisdom, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. The whole series shows us that TV stars with an ideal image, whom you want to listen to and whom you want to look up to, are actually scoundrels. And even some priests are among them. And even if they are not really scoundrels like Queen Maeve, then people are no less confused and doubtful. As you can see, the boys are not against the genre, but against the very structure of society. The society we live in right now. Okay, we've talked about the bad guys. And who are the good guys then? Is there a weapon against bad television? Yes, there is. As soon as something in the series gets into phone cameras, it immediately becomes a problem. This is the real thing, which is dangerous for the corporation. Even a superhero can be threatened with Twitter. But even here, it's not so simple, because with the help of social networks, you can also manipulate public opinion. In the second season, we are shown how you can just destroy a person's reputation in a few hours with the help of a couple of memes. You spent $273 million on that Saving America bullshit, and I am running circles around you with five guys on laptops churning out memes. This once again shows why The Boys is an actual series in our time, because it also denies inexpressive television, as today's shift of content and Instagram stories and some kind of uncensored life do. The Boys actively uses the aesthetics of modern corrupt media. Instagram, Twitter and Facebook, memes, broadcasts on social networks, television broadcasts, reports, even recordings made on the phone are full-fledged narrative tools that make the boys closer to our reality in another way. As if Homelander and Maeve are going to eat MREs and piss in a ditch with the rest of the crew. Yeah, hi, we're filming right now, excuse me. Also, you might recognize Army Boy as hotel clerk number hello? two from excuse The Devil's okay. Breath, right. episode of Criminal Minds Beyond Borders. Well, hello. The color palette of the series consists of deliberately dim shades, which contrast with the colorful Marvel films or the matte gloom of DC. The two main color schemes are blue-green and yellowish-blue. Such a dirty picture is a conscious move away from the superhero gloss. The viewer understands from the very first seconds that he finds himself in a gloomy and comfortless world. A handheld camera also brings viewers closer to the heroes. It creates the effect of presence in the scene and once again emphasizes the reduced, realistic aesthetics of the show. The action of the boys is intentionally realistic and big action scenes can be counted on your fingers. But those that are present and not striking in the extent but shocking in their absurdity and ingenuity. In the series, heads just burst, characters get a chase involving a whale and Butcher uses a baby with superpowers as a weapon. There are also scenes using slow-mo. It's a kind of parody of Zack Snyder's favorite technique. In addition, composer Christopher Reynolds constantly makes fun of Hollywood soundtracks, exposing the superficial pomposity of musical images and blockbusters. All these techniques are needed to more clearly show the reality in which the characters live. On the one hand, we see a vivid media image of superheroes. On the other, there is a repulsive reality. This is most evident in the scenes with the shooting of a documentary film when fiction and reality collide in following frames and even the aspect ratio changes. Among all the important ideas raised in the series, perhaps the most valuable one is that the main characters can be ordinary people who just take matters into their own hands. They are not perfect, often make mistakes and have a dark past. Like Starlight, today's protagonist refuses the messianic task that he has tried to assign. He wants to stay real and ordinary. Perhaps the most difficult thing in modern realities is to remain a human despite everything. But it would be wrong to say that The Boys completely cancels out the rest of the superheroics. This series is part of a large, plastic genre that is still developing and still has a huge number of fans around the world. If you click on this icon, you are finding out everything about the history of the development of film comics. What is the secret of their popularity? and how did world events affect the themes of superhero films. Follow the link and watch. About Movies was with you. Like this video and see you later.